I really do think that there is a misconception that it takes a whole lot of money to survive. And I think that that's because people are living above their means regardless, whether they're alone or whether they're in a relationship. Uh, whether they're single, whether they're in a family, whether they have children, people are living above their means. And when we talk about, you know, what people can live off of and what people need and how much money that is, to me, I don't think that, you know, we're having a realistic conversation about that. To date a man with money, but to irresponsible with money is more reckless than dating a man that has no character and no, I mean, that has good character with, mo with, with little money. Amen. Because it was reckless dating a man who had lots of money, who did not have good money management skills. That was reckless. In fact, that was the re that was that is that was the most challenging thing for me. I wish I would have had that financial piece locked down before I even uh, considered marriage, knowing what I know now, where she doesn't have to work, and if she wants to. Amen. But at least she had that option opposed to it's like, woman, you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to make it work. But that's just me being on the other other end now. I don't know, I'm a little older. So money and dating, who makes more money? I know this is a topic that can be tiring at some time, but I want to take a different approach to this. And I have a special guest, a returning guest, that's really going to help us with this whole dating and money and all this other good stuff. Today's guest is a is the chief strategist at Gotta Stay and is number one Amazon bestselling author of 20 something and rich. She began her career in corporate America, where she managed 100 million uh, budgets and led some of the biggest brands in the world to higher profitability. Now she uses the skills she learned in corporate America to help her clients maximize their income and effectively build for the future. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Natasha Kanar. How are you doing, Natasha? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for that introduction. Man, that brought me back for a second to those days where I was managing those $100 million budgets in corporate America. That seems like such a lifetime ago, but I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me again. Yes, for sure. Aquila, my co-host, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How are you, Sean? What's going on? I am good. Natasha, this is our our first uh episode together where we actually get the co-host so uh this Yay, is me i'm so yes. excited hi aquila so nice to meet you how are you doing do you prefer tasha or la tasha because i see the tasha tasha how are you doing i'm doing good thank you, you look great girl <laughs> thank you so do you thank you i love the hair awesome awesome hair <laughs> Well, Aquilo, uh, what this this topic? And we talked about this before, right? But let's. What What are your thoughts on this on this whole uh, uh, topic on money and what we're going to discuss? Uh, what What are my thoughts on the topic? So, first off, did you? Um, so, if if you see the video that um, the gentleman did, and he's talking about how women. Are, well, men are actually constantly hearing, you know, or implying that women are projecting this expectation for men to make all this money. And he challenges that with, but, but what money, you know, and not as if men are not making money, to be clear. So my personal, you know, <clears throat> perspective observation is that, you know, real partnership nine times out of 10, maybe that's too high because I know the world is changing. Even in the women, even in the dynamic of women, the world is changing. So let me just say this. Yeah. I'm going to take out my nine out of 10. I ignore that y'all. But what I will say is that when it comes to true partnership, most women are not necessarily looking at um, the requirement being only money, but wise women will look for a man with money because to be fruitful and multiply means you got to have something. And it's her and I'm, and I'm her. Mm -hmm. It's our intention. It's her intention to want to see us thrive and see you thrive. In fact, I, 
I'm still writing this post that I'm gonna that I'm gonna share, but it's it's because I had a conversation with another gentleman, and he said the same thing. Like women are only after money, and I said, "What woman do you want to be okay with you not doing well? <laughs> what you want a woman that's okay with you barely that you barely in survival mode? You're not thriving. You're not being. You're not successful. You want a woman that's okay with you." falling apart like that. And he was like that. You're right. I said, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Bible girl. So I was like to be fruitful and multiply means that I come on the scene with this expectation that we should be growing. Stuff should be growing. Is this an environment conducive to growth? So I I definitely feel like, you know, there are some, in fact, the very start of my post, I, I apologize because there are some negative connotations around women seeking out or inquiring as to whether or not this is a growth is this a growing environment but don't confuse a woman who wants to know is this environment productive fruitful and growing for a woman who's a gold digger they may think they may seem like they're the same because both of them have an interest in where you are financially but uh what they plan to do is different one comes to invest and true multiplication starts with two and greater Mm-hmm. One times itself will only be what it is. So a, a woman that has an investing mindset is going to come on the scene and be like, OK, so if I, if we bring these resources together, that's what investment looks like. What are how are we going to grow and better our circumstance? So mm-hmm. it's a lot to be said, Sean. It's a lot. <laughs> OK, wait for the money lady to be out here educating. <laughs> For sure. This is, oh yeah, you, yeah, you done kicked it off, uh, Quilla. Cause uh, the, yeah, cause the question he said, how can most, and I, I, I forgot the guy's name. It's just how can most women date for money when most men don't have none? And Latasha, I wanted to ask you about that. Is that a true statement and why? <laughs> okay. So before I answer the question, Sean. The first thing I want to say is that to everybody listening, specifically to all the men listening, to the men who are members of your community, I know that the social media conversations around men, women, and money, they are so contentious. You know, like there is a lot of anger and there is a lot of aggravation. And I just want to be clear, I am not here to further perpetuate any of that. I come having this conversation in the spirit of partnership, in the spirit of growth, in the spirit of honoring men and honoring women. And uh, um, just you know, I'm going to be speaking from a certain perspective and I can't speak for everybody. So if it resonates, allow it to resonate. If it don't continue to do you and that's okay with me. Okay. So I'll start there with the groundwork. Mm -hmm. Now, as I address the question, the first thing Okay, this might be a little contentious. (laughs) It's pathetic. It's a pathetic question. Like, how are, it's like, why do, how are women looking for men with money when men don't have money? And this is a man who said this. So I personally feel that is disrespectful to your own gender to come out the gate starting the conversation with what they don't have okay and back to Aquila's point it's like I want a man with money and men want money am I wrong or am I right so it would seem like we on the same page (laughs) I want you to have money you want to have money we agree right and so then the problem comes in when there is the idea that you want that that women want something from you that you cannot provide and i think that men are selling themselves short and if that's the case then that's where we should start what does it take for you to be the man that you want to be regardless of women what women want regardless of what women's requirements are what type of man do you want to be? What type of man do you see yourself as? Bring that to the table first, and then we can start to have the conversation about what women want, but not before, in my opinion. I agree. 
Yeah. I, I, you can just shut this whole situation down right now. Just wrap it up <laughs> and put a little bow on it. <laughs> if y'all have any questions for our guests, uh, feel, <clears throat> feel free to comment. Uh, how do you find how do you find that certain financial conversations or expectations are commonly misunderstood uh -uh. In dating? What's your perspective? You're not gonna just run these questions <laughs> out like that, sir. Absolutely not. Okay, well, see. There was a part that I have that I want to talk about, but I'm going to save that. Okay. Yeah, I want to save this. Oh. I'm saying you're going to save your part to the end, huh? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Almost, almost kind of, <laughs> you know, um, and there was a guy, uh, Willie said, he says, I agree with you. Uh, and and that's uh, another man speaking up. Um, I... I do find it interesting that the guy did make the the comment like, hey, most of y'all broke, you know. So I'm just thinking, I'm like, okay, so he must be paid then if he <laughs> if he's talking down, you know, to other men. But I was looking at some stats and I believe I sent them to you all to you both on USA Today. And the world we live in, the economy that we have, I believe that they were showing, I think men was at the average black man was around 51,000 a year. And mm -hmm. was it 58? It, was, it was one of those, I think it was 50, 51 or something like that, like the average black man, the amount of money that he made a year, the average. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not so much different. Like the black women are making forty eight thousand, and the black men about fifty two thousand. And what's the date? breaking even then? What's right. the date on this though? Is this accurate? Like twenty twenty four year? It's like this is twenty twenty four. This is twenty twenty four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I, what I do believe, you know, if I can consider that his the the meaning behind his post. I believe his intentions were good because you said this too <clears throat> when we were talking, Sean, that sometimes people regurgitate stuff that ain't even their real circumstance. So I do believe that that may be part of why he was addressing it because there is so much dialogue around. It's no different than, you know, a woman, you know, than posts that are out there like, you know, men always talking about they want a woman that's in it. Most men don't even. I mean, let me say this. A lot of men ain't even raising that in the conversation. They're they're really trying to see if a woman will respect them. Those are those are real experiences. Like even when I have the ability to coach other couples, they're not talking submission. They are definitely talking respect. Are you able to hear me? Are you considering what I said? Did you did you do what I'm asking you to do over? all the other people voices that's in your life that you also consider and you know what I'm saying and apply what they're saying. Does my voice hold value? So sometimes people adopt problems. So they're adopting somebody else's issue and then regurgitating it like it's their own real experience and questions that probably trigger ideas that associate with this issue is like, well, what do you do for work? Then they might automatically assume Oh, they're asking me how much money I make. They're trying to find what do I, you know, <clears throat> you'd be surprised how many women, when they're asking that question, they're checking your creativity level. They're checking, you know, if you, if you're productive, if it's something you're passionate about, they want to know about your purpose. They're learning so much more in that question. That's not always tied to money. The way we're wired, I believe, when it comes to being a woman, we are definitely purpose-focused folk. And it ain't just about purpose being this one identity either. You know, I wear many hats unapologetically. I juggle lots of things in my life. I'm okay with it. You know, so this, so if I ask you, you know, what do you do or what's your, you know, I'm, I'm finding out how did you get tied into what your, your work, your field of work. But some of those questions probably are triggering for some men because they automatically associate like, oh, she's trying to find out how much I make. This is already her preconceived notion that I won't be able to do X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> so I think that there's his, I think in addition to, yes, it sounds negative and I'm not dismissing that. But what I believe is sometimes, you know, 
the heart of the thing is still there. And I think the heart of his message is saying, we, ha as men, please stop adopting. If this ain't your story, don't apply to you. But please stop adopting this narrative that all women are just after your money, you know, or all women are gold digging. Stop adopting and passing it all. We contaminating yep. these conversations because of those type of statements. I agree. And you probably they're probably talking about a certain demographic <clears throat> of, of of women or you know, guys, they, they're not talking about every day. And that's why when I sent you both the, the screenshot of USA Today. If you look at it, black men and women, we aren't too far off financially. Mm -hmm. The average, you know, so could it have been that he this not the guy, but somebody he was probably trying to shoot his shot at some. Uh, no shade, but, you know, the IG model or something, I don't know, or somebody trying to get flown out. I don't know, but they get shot down and then all of a sudden they make this assumption. Or age or age group. Or age group. Because, honey, some of these conversations over here in this good 40 world, amen. <laughs> it's a different story. It hit different. Oh, yeah, because I tell people in real life, I'm not checking if you got a car. I don't, I don't, I've never had a date a man without a car. These aren't conversations I'm having. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, you being able to sustain your life, never having those conversations. Like, I don't have to. Mm. I don't have to have that conversation of sustenance for you. So, but if you're talking to these red balloon popping people, and I'll let you continue. <laughs> so, Latasha, with, with with a lot of your clients, like, do you see the financial financials? <laughs> is that kind of idea the fifty one thousand to forty eight thousand men and women, or are you more higher higher echelon of clients? Um, my one-on-one -on -one clients, they make more than that. Um, I primarily work with women and my clients, my, my women clients, they tend to make a lot more than the, than the median. Yeah. Um, but I also have a community of women that I serve. And in that community, that is, you know, typically where they fall. And with my clients who make a little bit more money, it's not uncommon for them to be with men who make less money and they don't have a problem with it. I probably protest a little bit more than he, than they do. And so it's, they're very comfortable with it. Um, and so I, I do think the point that the social media conversations that are out there are not necessarily um, indicative of what's really happening in the world. And I think the statistics about where men and women are financially just further demonstrates that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when I first relocated, uh, when I moved from Arizona to Texas, when I first got here, like I didn't have a job. I relocated, I had my money saved, brought some money, boom, gave it to my wife. Hey, we're going to make this work. But I went like probably like a month without a job or something. And then on top of that, then on top of that, the funny thing was, I was like, okay, this trash man job is position position is open right now. I'm just gonna take it because I can start today. And my wife was making more money than me. I wasn't tripping. It was just the fact that I chose to work for my family until I can latch on and get something better. And that's that's exactly what happened. But I think when we have these conversations about you know, a certain value of a man based on money. Like I said, I think it depends on a certain yeah. demographic of, of, of woman that he choose to deal with. I think that's kind of what it is. Um, so dating, like, how do you have that conversation about finances? Cause obviously you want to know if this person is, is good with finances or not. Like how does that conversation work or how long does it even take? before you start to have those those money conversations? I'm so glad that you asked this question because I think that there are two different speeds that you want to be moving at when you are looking at, you know, money in dating and money in relationships. Now, the first thing is you want to just be perceptive and aware um, about the baseline. 
I really do think that there is a misconception that it takes a whole lot of money to survive. And I think that that's because people are living above their means regardless, whether they're alone or whether they're in a relationship, uh, whether they're single, whether they're in a family, whether they have children, people are living above their means. And when we talk about, you know, what people can live off of and what people need and how much money that is, to me, I don't think that, you know, we're having a realistic conversation about that. But when you are dating and when you meet somebody, you just want to be paying attention to, you know, are they hitting the baselines of what you could see yourself dealing with, right? And so I'm always just, you know, how somebody carries themselves, how they talk, how they text me, like just basic things like that yeah. tell me so much about the type of person that it, they are. And I'm always leading with character over cash. I want to know about your character because that's going to, you know, you said you took a, a job as a trash man and your wife was making more than you. But what was at the heart of that is I'm going to be contributing something to my family. So a man that's willing to take a job and do what he has to do to be able to contribute to his family so that they have what they need, that's the type of character, ding, ding, ding. That's the type of character that you want to be associating yourself with. I remember when my boyfriend, he had lost his job for a period of time. And that had never really, that hadn't happened to him in a long time. And, uh, you know, he was like, it, it took everything in him to ask me to borrow some money. And I'm like, sure, no problem. Didn't even think twice. Give you a little extra. Like, it's not a thing. And the reason that I could do that is because he had already demonstrated to me that he is a man with a plan. He is a man who cares about provision. So I already know what this, I already know how this story going to play out. He about to make it work one way or another. I'm not even worried about it. Yeah. So that's the first B. Look at character over cash and trust that, you know, there is this episode on a different world where Whitley is talking about, you know, she wants a uh, a wealthy man. And, the, and then she said, well, what if you have a poor man? And, and she's like, I'm looking for a man with character. I'm looking for a man who has wisdom. I'm looking for a man who has it. that type of man is never poor. Mm -hmm. So leave with that. The second thing that I will say is that a lot of times women, especially in this day and age, there is a sense of entitlement that may have them lead with money too soon. If a man, you know, now basic things like, you know, he's taking you out to dinner, you know, he is being intentional with you. That's enough in those beginning stages. So I would say there are different currencies in a relationship. At the beginning, you want to look for the effort. Is he putting in the effort to spend time together to create experiences with us together? The second thing you want to look at is time. Is he available to spend time with me, but not too available because I want to know that he is gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you know, once once he has put in his effort, both of you have once he has put in his time and both of you have, you know, and then the relationship starts to get a little bit more serious. Then you might graduate into what is this man pouring into me? What is this man investing in me in all the different ways? Right. And. It's going to be reciprocal, but it's not necessarily going to be the same. So while he okay. might be pouring money into you, but you're going to be also reciprocating that. And it may be financial, but it also may not be. It might be in other ways, you know, there, you know, for my boyfriend, I'm looking at, I want him to be comfortable. I want him to have, you know, the things that are like, he has his certain food that he likes to eat. So I'm going to make sure that those things are there for him. So I'm contributing in a certain way to his comfort, to his happiness, to his well-being, you know, and he's contributing in his certain ways as well. So um, when it comes to money in a relationship and in dating, think about those phases. And when a man is trying to lavish you with money too soon, too much too soon, mm -hmm. that could also be a red flag. If a man is withholding, that is also a red flag. You see these women who are in marriages and they say, you know, you know, uh, I'm about to have a baby and, you know, I'm going to have to go on maternity leave, but my husband doesn't want to contribute to X, Y, and Z. Well, those signs were there before. That didn't just happen out of the blue. So there's so much to consider, but I think that's a good place to start. Mm. That's a phenomenal place to start. And I think that one of the, one of the, my favorite things is what you talked about is there being multiple currencies. Most people just talk about money. 
but there are definitely multiple currencies in, in relationship and graduating. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I say when it comes to relationship is we give we give licenses for everything, but we're but marriage, I mean, we give education for many things that require licenses except marriage or except, you know, relationships. So my point is, is that there is so much that people don't know. And their reference points are not good. They're not. They're not healthy. So they come into their relationship dynamics with these un, with these unhealthy expectations or this entitlement based off of the fact that they haven't been spoken to in a in a with a heart of wisdom and love and consideration because love is not self seeking. So with love not being self seeking, I can't be in a position where I'm the only one that matters. I talk to couples about that all the time, but we have done a poor job happy wife, happy life. We have done a poor job of bringing equality to the happiness in both genders because of statements like that, that when a person doesn't have wisdom, then they take the excess, they take that and they bring excess to that. So happy wife, happy life doesn't out. Now for some people that circumvents in the whole household, because if she's happy, then I understand that I'm going to receive the things that I need. But for some people without wisdom, amen, church, uh, yeah, it becomes extreme selfishness yeah. where they become the priority. So if he's tired, if he's um, had a long day, it doesn't matter because he's the provider. He doesn't have a moment where he gets to lay down his burdens and be and you you can serve and love. And like you said, and I absolutely love that you said, I, I contribute to his happiness and his comforts and things like that. And, and, and I saw, I was telling Sean, I saw this video that was quite disturbing for me. And it said that we got to not be put in men and receive mode. We got to You can't just have a man out there just, you know, I get the point, but she was highlighting that women shouldn't really give to men um, because it puts them in a state of receive mode and, now it takes them out of being providers. But I'm like, to your point, when there's when when there's a healthy love, ain't no such thing. Because yeah. I'm giving to you, you giving to me, we giving to we. Like this is listen, Linda, we are here doing whatever we, we we are in each other's best interest, and that's the goal. Yeah. So that's where those money conversations now is like it's not a shot at your confidence. Mm -hmm. Um. You know what I mean? To, to the to the when I was married and, and my my ex husband and I are like still cool. You know, we we go we 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 cool it in popsicle still, but we got married at eighteen years old, very young. You know, assumed a property at twenty. Like we were we were it was a lot of responsibility, but we were happy, we were thriving and well. But when he lost his job, the same for you. Like the, I was like, no, babe, I got you. What what do we need? Because we are. A, a team. And so I think that a lot of these conversations around finances and you brought it up as well, they, they lack the heart of partnership, but some people don't know how to, I learned not everybody knows how to be partners. Mm -hmm. You can have a partner and still not know how to do partnership. I mean, I just love you, Tasha. So I'm coming to the house. We don't just sit up. I'm just going to give me a little teacup and drink water in it. Amen. Cause <laughs> I don't always drink tea, but <laughs> um, and I'm not always a coffee girl unless I'm dying to sleep. So anyway, I'm coming to the house and I'm just going to give me a little cup and we, I could just listen to you talk all day, but because your heart is like, it's, I, I, I see you. And so I'm just like, I love her. I just love you. <laughs> I just love you. I just want you to know that Sean. Thanks. I love you. You just gave me a new bestie. Oh. You? <laughs> yes, and so, but I just love how, because that's another thing that I'm, I promise you, you're, it's like you could sit, you could take on my clients then, you know what I mean? Because to tell them that reciprocity is not synchronization is what I normally say. We reciprocate, but we don't have to be in sync. I don't have to do exactly what you do and you do exactly what I do, but we can reciprocate and we can give and, and things like that. So I think to your point, like, there's we don't give permission for levels. We don't give permission for, um, you know, for 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 us to grow in learning people. We want to know all, you know, some people want to know all the stuff at the door. So because and you're calling that a, weird, a red flag if you don't when really there is, you know, it's like you walking into certain businesses, you know, even in companies 
sometimes when you go into some companies you start in, you don't get access to everything they want. <laughs> yeah. And you could be a real employee, <laughs> but they're not giving you access to everything day one. And in fact, you have you may even grow in your position there, and then because of your title change, you grant you're granted more access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we don't consider stuff like that. See, yeah, this is good. I'm yeah, this is the whole conversation right here. You're not gonna say nothing. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm 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 I've just become the student. I'm just like, you know what? I'm I'm just soaking up game. Because Tasha, I want to talk about this. And Aquila, you yeah, I had a double back. Are you saying that you so can you separate? And I'm trying to correct, I'm trying to get the right words that you said. So it, does cash and character go together? Or what was the words you used? You said, I think you said something about character. <laughs> or... But I said, um, I lead with character. Yeah. All right. When you lead with character, um, I think that for me is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And when somebody is showing to me that they are a good person, that they are a wise person, right? It gives me indicators along the way. And so um, on day one, I'm not necessarily looking at what does your bank account look like, right? Because I know that if you're smart, if you're intelligent, if you are honest, Right. Then no matter where you are now, we could work that out. I could we got look, pass it this way, we gonna make it do what it do. Yeah. But certain things I'm unable to if you're a bad person, there's not much I'm not willing to do anything with that. Right. If you are not wise, if you don't if you can't exercise wisdom, there's not much that I can do with that. And when I first started dating, me and my boyfriend, we've been in a long-term relationship. And I know this isn't necessarily something that everybody could do. So when I'm talking about what I'm doing with my boyfriend, that don't mean that you go do that with yours. <laughs> um, but when, uh, you know, we first started dating, he didn't, he had a good job, but he didn't have a lot of wealth or a lot of assets, you know, but he was a good person, like character I love the person that he was. And now, you know, assets, bank account, investments, all the, all the accounts, like all the money, 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 money everywhere. Yeah. It's because I could work with the character, right? And um, a lot of times in relationships, these are things that couples are going to be learning together. Because like I said, people are living beyond their means. People are not prioritizing money management. 78% of the population is they're living paycheck to paycheck. Right. So get up, you know, talk about partnership, having having accountability partner, having somebody that you can work on this budget with, having a purpose and a reason saying, OK, we're in this together and we about to make this work. Maybe we hadn't been sticking to the budget before. Maybe we haven't been executing our plans, but now we are. And sometimes, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So over there, you were doing your own thing and I was doing my own thing. But now that we come together and we have this partnership, we want to make it even greater than what we were doing alone. And so now that topic of money, it, it becomes even more important. You can execute it on it on it even more than you were before. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Ah, this is so good because I, I, I feel the conversation shifting and I'm excited about this because I do think that character. I'm going to have to take that from you, uh, Tasha. Because uh, like I said, you could work with, you know, somebody that's good. That's, But if you don't have that character, because more than likely, if you do have good character, uh, more than likely, you are going to pay your bills on time. Right. You know, more than likely, you're going to pay your, your debts and stuff like that. But I will say after, you know, once we get into that organic period and I start and we start, you know, wanting to make this serious, I'm going to be, you know, I got into my boyfriend's bank accounts, like what the bank accounts look like, what money is in there. You know, once you start getting in a serious committed joint partnership where y'all locked in for real, for real. And you are thinking like, this is going to be my life partner. I want to marry this person. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not the type of person who I was just talking to one of my friends about this today. I'm not going to be like, you know, I don't lead with money. No, I want to see the bank account. Money matters to me. Mm -hmm. I want to be wealthy. So I'm going to be putting it 
putting my, you know, putting that front, front and center. Let's see what the money is looking like, you know, and I'm not going to be shy about that. And like I said before, you know, as a man, men want to have money. Women want them to have money. We're on the same page. And so I'm going to be leading, you know, I'm not going to be shy about the conversation looking at, okay, what does the bank account look like? And a lot of times men are going to need to have this conversation with the women in their lives too. So let's not act like the things that matter don't matter because we don't want to be seen as a gold digger. Because as soon as that comes into the conversation, that lets me know that you don't trust me. And this isn't, if I can't be safe and caring about the things that are important to me, then this isn't the right space for me to Agreed. be. Agreed. Agreed. Agree. It's the safety in being able to express your concerns. <laughs> it's a safety in that. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a safety. But I, I think that um, what one of the things you said that I think is important, and I know I do even in my dating experience, is I consider a man when he say he on a budget. I like it. I think it's sexy and romantic mm -hmm. when a man got boundaries with his finances. Amen. Because I married. OK, so. I had a quick marriage the second time. Don't judge me, y'all. Um, married for two seconds, literally five months. But one of the, and and and, and I ignore flags. I'm not blaming nobody but myself. Don't y'all come out here for me. If you, you don't know me, don't, don't come for me like that. So I saw flags. I was also young still and um, ignorant in a lot of ways. However, what I learned is, and I tell people, to date a man with money, but it's irresponsible with money is more reckless than dating a man that has no character and no, I mean, that has good character with, mo with, with little money. Amen. Because it was reckless dating a man who had lots of money, who did not have good money management skills. That was reckless. In fact, that was the, re that was, that is, that was the most challenging thing for me <laughs> to deal with. Like you, he, he, he has some other things going, amen. But that right there, because there was no financial safety. If we came together in which we end up doing coming together in partnership, like you said, like I, I'm in it. I'm I'm getting in, in it all in the business. So I'm like, hey, well, just tell me where we are financially. And if you're telling me we're at a negative, then I need I know where I need to fill in gaps. And let's talk about how we need to reevaluate because I'm I'm the live within my means queen. You hear me? So, baby, if if going on date night while we're married is creating a very cute, subtle date in the living room, the consideration matters because I want us to be in a good financial spot. I don't want you telling me you took me to dinner and now we tapped out and we sitting over here needing about five dollars from Sean so we can have gas to get to work. The devil is alive three times. Amen. I'm not doing it. So I agree that like, so I've dated men who was like, man, budget is tight. And I'm like, I just like the fact that you know what your money doing. Mm. Let's start with that. Because some people don't know what their money is doing. They don't know what a budget is. They don't know what they're doing. Because people you're preaching because women will look at that and think that's a man that doesn't have money. And it couldn't be further from the truth. That's the man that does have money, right? That's the man who actually has a financial plan. And a lot of times we Ooh. get it twisted. We get it confused. We think that it's the man who is spending the money, the man who is whining and dining, the man that's taking you on the shopping sprees, right? The man that's, you know, taking you on vacation. You Women think that that's the man that has money when actually it's the opposite. That's the man who has no money because everything that comes in is going out. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I remember when I started to work with my boyfriend on a budget, he implemented it. We spent, we spent maybe six hours one night going through everything, setting everything up. He started implementing it. And I promise you the next day I was on the budget from his bank account. He was like, yeah, so we're not going to be able to do this and this and this anymore because this is, I was like, damn, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize I was giving you games so you can run the game on me. Now I'm on the budget too. <laughs> like you restricted me too. But it was so beautiful. And so Isn't it beautiful? That's beautiful. And it paid off. So when I say money, 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 account, 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 it's like all the things. I mean, you know, that didn't happen overnight. That wasn't there before. That's what partnerships look like. Right. So, I mean, that's the word right there. And I love the fact that for anybody out there where there's all this convoluted information around, don't do that unless that's your husband. 
you have to realize that your dating should be your prep ground for marriage. It should also be a reflection. When you get into a serious relationship, this should be a reflection of what marriage is going to look like. Marriage is should be really just the outward expression of what you already doing. So if you if you got to wait till marriage for a person to be safe financially, to have these conversations about money, to make sure that you can express your concerns, to be honest, you're doing it wrong. Because your outward reflection of what's going on in your heart is what you're confessing and professing on that day. It's already the action to what you already have been demonstrating. So I love the fact that this is still your relationship where you're unmarried. And y'all out here showing partnership better than folks. I'm being honest. I've talked to married couples and I'm like, I had an epiphany like literally about a couple weeks ago. And I said, I I understand the equation now. Mm -hmm. Like when two become one, right? And I know that's the the math. It's such a beautiful equation because two become one, but still got to be two because that's where true multiplication comes when there's two and greater, right? Mm -hmm. But the two becoming one, became the equation that I understood a little differently because I was like, the reason you have to be one is because you have to be impacted by what I'm doing. And I have to be impacted by what you're doing. That's like the best partnership. It's not just intimacy, it's intercession. Because otherwise you have positioned yourself to be disconnected from the matters of the heart from the other person there. It's literally like being in a relationship alone. When I'm only for me and you're only for you, we're still two. But even even biblically, without thinking of it to me, that's a more simple version. But the Bible says that your body is not your own. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, you know, vice versa. But that's what that is. Meaning that if I get pricked, my body is not my own. My man should feel that prick. That means that he should be pained by the things that pains me. (laughs) That's the reason why. That one, that oneness and oneness doesn't come without transparency. Oneness doesn't come without feeling safe to be transparent. Oneness doesn't come without communication and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that you're like, no, this is my boyfriend. We are in this position. And just for the people who may try to say, you know, like, oh, I I wouldn't be doing all that for my boy. You don't know partnership for real. You don't know (laughs) partnership. It's so funny that you would say that because... It, it never, I never intended to get to this place. It was just like, oh, I'm practicing partnership. I was just practicing partnership. And, and I was just like practicing. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like we here now. Like that's Exactly right. And that's the right way though. This is, this is what it is. For sure. Oh my God. That's the right way. What would you say, Sean? Is that not the evolution? You've been married before. You're married now. Is it not the evolution of partnership? Like you don't wait till you get married to become partners. That's true. You you have to learn. You got to get in the mud with them, right? I mean, you, because that's how you're going to learn. You on the job training. You got to know because. And the funny thing about that is sometimes. In marriage, true, in relationships, even in general, you just go through so many different stages in life so many different stages and it's like it it encourages us to keep the communication good because we have to know where we at at all times and that's something that I learned going through a divorce because even now with my wife I'm like checking in like how you doing what's going on in your world you know what I'm saying because you can be with somebody and don't even know like they 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 gone mentally they somewhere else they're all in the same house true story you know so i think that communication piece is so important y'all got to be locked in for real because we got all these social media platforms and stuff like that and and and, and the communication is bad between people <laughs> all this all this communication we got going on um i wanted to uh shift gears a little bit because my wife and i talking about communication uh we created these uh intimacy cards uh intimacy questions love fearlessly intimacy uh, questions so you can ask these questions while on a date and here's the question tasha i want to ask you this okay <laughs> are there any financial goals you would like to achieve this year mm, love it and you don't have to share them all but you know this is this is just like date night question stuff 
Well, I'll look in the next 12 months since we are almost at the end of the year right now. Um, I would say in the next 12 months, I want to be in a position to be a parent if I need to. So um, like if I need to adopt um, you know, every summer I keep my nephews for three months and I want to be in a financial position to buy a home, to get a bigger place if I need to have them full time. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of my life worried about me and doing it so that my legacy could be family, but my family might need me sooner than I thought. So I want to be in a position, um, yeah, to get a bigger place, um, and support a family because even for that one month when they're with me, yeah, they cost me so much money. I'm just like, listen, Welcome to parenthood. <laughs> Give them, and I'm just like, even just just food alone. I'm like, I don't know how people can feed four people. They eat every day, three times a day, and they won't let you forget because I only eat two times a day. They'd be like, "PT, we need lunch." <laughs> like, Tasha, Tasha, like lunch. She's like, what? I gotta feed you again. So yeah, I want to be a, be in a position to do that, and I don't necessarily have specifics. You know, I got to go to the financial drawing board on that. Sure. But that's what my that's like my newest and most important goal. Love it. Love it. What that's about so you, Aquila? Um, I would say I would like to um, in the next. I don't have a number quite yet. I do, but I don't. But I want. I'm working on my savings account. So just growing my savings. Like I'm fighting for my life for my savings account. And it's not just about a rainy day. It's just a lifestyle. Just making sure because I do have kids, Tasha. And I feel like I tell my kids, I'm like, you guys are the enemy to my savings account. <laughs> At the end, they do. Me. They do. Girl, you know, it, she, my baby just started basketball. We've also re relocated. And so her school tells me like, okay, well, here at this school, her, you know, this is the total cost just for whatever for the season, $1,200 to play basketball. The ball costs 30 bucks, right? No, what we doing with this? So that doesn't include me attending games. That doesn't include, so literally like I'm working now also with my 16 year old very closely on budgeting. Just because we can don't mean we should. And so that's one of our things because I want her, you know, I didn't grow up with the best financial habits. I didn't grow up being exposed. And again, I bought my first home when I was 20 years old. But thank you, God. Like, you know, I had a mother who spoke to us saying, hey, this is an opportunity. You can do this. But I do remember us not always having the best. So to your point, I began to adopt the concept of not wanting to live above my means. Like, I don't want to be in a position where I'm constantly just over broke and things like that. So um, lately, you know, I've been like kind of careless around whether or not my savings account depletes or goes or out or up or down. And now I'm just fighting for my life literally to just make sure that I keep it growing and not touch it. So that's my thing. Love it. Love it. Tasha, we we were on. Uh, you invited me on a live uh, a week ago, maybe two, something like that. Yeah, yeah, right. And you asked the question about uh, and help me maybe rephrase it about why is it easier for men to say no about money, or was that the question? Yeah, it was basically that. Yeah, and so I was thinking, I was like. I want to go back and visit this place real quick because I was just thinking about this after we had the conversation. I'm like, I need to say this. And I don't know if I said it on the recording or not, but go go check it out on uh, Tasha's um, Instagram. But I was thinking most men, I believe, are judged based on our, our financial status. So a lot of times we, we, we turn everybody away. 
We're like, nope, nope, nope. This is nope. Nope. We need to take care of home first. Now, I love what you said about having a budget for friends and family. Like, hey, we're going to allot $500 a month for family or whatever. And, stuff. and when that money's gone, it's gone. And I love the idea. I'm, I need to implement that like ASAP. I think that's a very great idea. But I was thinking, I said, I, I think most men are protective in that area when it comes to finances. Let's make sure our home is straight. Let's make sure that we good. Make sure our numbers are running good. And if we can, we will help you, you know, depending like that whole black tax you talked about. You know, you might be on to something because I do, now that you say that, I've had conversations with men where they are very intentional about protecting their family unit. They're like, listen, this is mine. This is my house. I got to make sure that my wife is good, that my kids are good, that their legacy is good, you know, and they get very protective and it's very sexy. I'm just like, okay, yes. That's real. Oh, you I'm might be on to something about that. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that, Aquila? We talked about that. Uh, me and Tasha talked about that. But what, what what are your thoughts on this? I actually did a video about this, um, saying that that I think men do say no better because they are providers, mm -hmm. and protection looks like that. Mm -hmm. When I'm saying no, as a I'm not a man, but when you're saying no, mm -hmm. that's protection. I am I am interceding on my ability to keep and preserve like a protector means that I'm not just keeping stuff out, but I'm preserving what's here, what's in. And I don't want to be in a position where there is a deficit in my home and my household because I'm saying yes too often. Mm -hmm. So I remember having this revelation by watching my uncle, my, my parents are both deceased now, unfortunately. So, but I've got a really good example through my uncle that I've been closer to in this season of life and just watching him, who's also an entrepreneur who worked as a cop for, you know, 25 plus years and what have you. So I'm watching him manage business and then I'm watching him manage family and I'm listening to him when it comes to, let's say my daughter, my daughter may say, uncle, could you get this for me? And he's going to get it for her because this is a part of his family dynamic is me and my daughter. Mm -hmm. But then he go, he, he may vent to me and say, do you know that so-and-so had the nerve to call me and ask me for $20? Now, my daughter just spent that same 20 out your account, Lord, bless the Lord. And you took her to Chick-fil-A, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's his preservation. Like, my ability to sustain what I have going on requires me to say no. And I remember being married, so that's why... I'm the, when I say Mary, y'all, I'm talking about the one that, uh, amen, that I actually, hallelujah. Yeah, so not the, not the, not the quickie, y'all. Not the quickie. But I was married for seven years and um, really great partnership. And he was the same way. I was out, I was out here like, why we can't just help? Why can't we just, well, we got it, you know? And he's like, no, and no, because then we need it. I'm like, but. We got it and we're going to get it again. Like, you know, it's coming again. And he was like, uh-huh. And it's going to be more when it comes again. <laughs> uh, uh. You hear me? He said, no. So that way, when it, when next time, it, when our deposit comes, we will have more than what we were going to have if I would have said, yeah. So it is protection. It's intercession. And um, I was also going to say real quick, too, when we talk about, you know, being productive and being fruitful in partnerships, God, I feel is so smart that he, when God said to be fruitful and multiply, that was a command to men and women. We both got to be making money. We both got to be growing. But I believe that's intercession because they say the word on the street is majority of divorces happen because of finances. Yeah. But you want to you know what that usually means? One person's fruitful and the other person's divisive. Because if both people are fruitful, both people are coming together and understand investing and growing. You don't make an enemy that way. But but a good even the couples, are, somebody's spending too much. The couples I've talked to, yep. when one person is spending more than the other, it's calling it's causing contention. It's causing the disagreement. It's causing the distance. Yep. 
So yeah. the command to be fruitful and multiply was to help keep us together. Mm, yeah. Yeah, because I and I, I don't want to end this. I want to end it with this because I want to make sure that I honor both of your time. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> and I was going to say that for me, knowing what I know now, being a little little older now, um, looking back, I probably would have waited to have my ducks in a row financially, where I was like, when it's time for me to get married. You don't have to work just because I see so much that my wife does now with us having two boys with autism, one with ADHD, and we just running around here like everybody's sleep now. That's why I'm able to record. <laughs> but knowing what I know now, I I, I wish I would have had that financial piece locked down before I even uh, considered marriage, knowing what I know now, where she doesn't have to work. And if she wants to, Amen. But at least she had that option opposed to it's like, woman, you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to make it work. But that's just me being on the other other end now, now that I'm a little older. So um, any closing comments before we got here? I'm going to let that lady at the hour say something. I just want to hear her one more good time before we exit the building. Um, so first, Sean, thank you for sharing, you know, where you have, how you've evolved in your ideas. I think that that's something really important for men to hear from men. Um, one thing I'll leave you with is something very practical. When you are, you know, getting in a relationship and you are progressing and you're becoming serious and you're locked in and you're, you're getting married, right? Once you get to that point, what I recommend is that you have a strategy for how you manage your household as a unit, right? So as this unit, this is not thinking about the woman as an individual person or the man as an individual partner. You're thinking about this as the business of your family, all coming under one umbrella. And each of you, you know, there's going to be money coming into that umbrella, either from him or from both parties or from her or from wherever it's coming from. And you want to think about, are we putting all the money into the family pot? All right. Are we going to determine a percentage of each paycheck of how much goes into the family pot? Or are we going to put it all in and then determine who gets this much spending money and who gets that much spending money based on what you have going on. What I will say is sit down and have the conversation about how you want to handle the family's money because it's not your money or his money once you're under that umbrella, right? Once you get that last name, once you say, you know, I do, well, now the partnership is going to be run so much more efficiently if you figure out how you want to put those resources together and then how you want to allocate it from there. All right. So I wanted to leave you with something practical because a lot of times one couples, they don't know what to do with the money. Um, when people are married, they don't know how to manage the money successfully. And it breeds a lot of resentment. Mm -hmm. Right. But at, uh, both parties are not going to handle money exactly the same. Right. So you want to have that conversation, you know, like you said, have that communication dialed in and then allocate the money accordingly and in agreement. Mm -hmm. All right. That will mitigate so many issues. And what I hope you heard throughout our entire conversation was just listening, understanding. We say a partnership so many times, like you're listening to people who want to be in relationship, who come to the table with the open heart, who, you know, we believe in reciprocity, right? We believe in provision. We believe in love and care. And so I hope that, you know, you take something away from this conversation that's going to help you advance in your relationships and advance in your finances. Love it. Love it. Tasha, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you, what you got going on. I just dropped my budget planner. And if you are trying to get your finances together, whether it's just you, whether it was you and your partner, um, download my budget planner. You can find it um, on Instagram. My my handle is gotta stay HQ. That's G-O-D-E-S-T-E-H-Q. 
And God is saying means that you are not helpless, hopeless, or powerless. In fact, you are powerful beyond measure and you have everything that you need inside of you already right now to transform your finances. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me at Twitter. You can search my name, Latasha Kennard. Um, and I'll be there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's what's up. I'll have all that linked up in the description. Closing words, Q, let us know how everyone can find you. Wherever Tasha's at, that's where I will be. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you are phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. So I'm on um, TikTok, Instagram, and the book face as Aquila Maddox. And that's that's really, that's it right there, guys. Yeah. But well, they're going to do something with TikTok. I don't know if they're going to keep it around or what. So we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. So we'll, we'll figure Aquila, it out. It was so nice to meet you. Yes, yeah, same here. Yes. I love your heart. I love your heart. It is showing through your words and your conversation. We hear. I'm so serious. I love it. So listen, I'm supporting. I'm about to go follow her. Literally got my phone ready, honey. I'm about <laughs> to be connected. Get this budget planner because it's time for us to elevate. We can't keep being a part of the conversations or complaints. So that's what I'm closing with. Let's be a part of the conversation because we are changing our lives, not because we're just saying, but because we're doing. Can we do that? Can we can we stop using God knows my heart is the scapegoat for us to stay in mediocrity? Can we do that? Wow. Ah, that a preach. This has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you all so much. Thank you for everyone who joined us on IG Live. Also, everyone who joined us on TikTok as well. This will video will be available. Uh, you can watch the replay. <clears throat> but also, if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button. Also, leave a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? So drop those uh, those comments below. We'd love to hear from you from the ratings. Um, give us a five-star rating. Show us some love. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this with a friend because you don't know who's struggling financially. Put this in your group chat because y'all know y'all be talking and this video can help somebody, help you and your girlfriends, help you and your homies. That's where it's going down. That's how I can get my views up. Y'all show some more love. Uh, thanks again, Tasha. Always great. You know, we, we're going to do this again another time. Aquila, this is just the beginning. We're about to change the game. Yes. Uh, they, they're not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready. So we're about to change the game. So everyone, yeah, go connect, go connect with Aquila. Go connect with Tasha as well. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Tasha Kennard and my co-host Aquila Maddox. We are